Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is October 20th, and right now we are looking at the infrared satellite imagery. You can see Alaska, British Columbia, Washington, Oregon. Check out our next system out over the Pacific Ocean here. Should be moving in as we go through this weekend. But all eyes are on some colder air trying to make its way down across some of Alaska into Canada and eventually the Pacific Northwest. But we have huge model disagreement, and I'll show you what I mean as we go through the video here today. This is a, the mug here that I've been talking about a little bit here. I, I did a little giveaway there and I'm going to do another one here today. So any members go ahead and comment below and I'll do a random drawing and somebody will win this mug today. It's a huge one, 20 ounces. I, I use it every morning here uh, for my coffee and look at it, British Columbia. This was issued just afternoon yesterday. Check it out. Kennedy Lake Forestry Station over 10 inches of rain with this last event. Tofino over eight inches. You can see West Vancouver 110 millimeters. That's over four inches of precipitation here when you break that down uh yeah incredible amounts for some areas and this just kind of gives you an idea just how much fell up there you can see even vancouver international airport got over two inches of rain in this precipitation event here hopefully this is helping out with any fires that may be still ongoing here across western and southwestern british columbia check out SeaTac yesterday 69 degrees another very warm day out there just three degrees off the record high no precipitation and look what happened 20 years ago on this day today 5.02 inches of rain the rainiest day ever recorded at SeaTac Airport. I might have to do a little breakdown on that. I was actually working outside and, and kind of an open door warehouse there on that day and just remember the heavy precipitation ongoing all day. Pretty interesting setup here across Pacific Northwest. Now we're looking at warm temperatures through Saturday, mainly across much of the area. You can see areas up near the 70s, Ellensburg, John Day, Joseph Kennewick. You can see the Dallas, Walla Walla here, Yakima, nice warm temperatures. But then you can see the big change as we go through the upcoming week here. And there is huge disagreement on just how cold we're going to get. And I'll show you that here in a moment. This is Missoula, Montana. A little bit higher confidence, the better you go east. But still, this initial round could be delayed of some of this colder air. And I'll show you that in a moment, as I've been saying. Stick with me here. Thursday's record high is Spokane, 76. Pullman, 77. Euphrata tied at 72 here. And you can see it broke a record all the way back from 1921, 1974 for Pullman. There, nice graphics, as always, from the National Weather Service, Spokane. And take a look here. This is for Great Falls, Montana. Look at some of these temperatures as we go through this week. Some areas may not be getting above freezing but again there's some big model disagreement and if you want a nice affordable home weather station you have a plug in here it attaches to this you put it on your desk and the station transmits to that wirelessly and then you have your smartphone app and you can access this uh, even on your smartwatch and any desktop computer out there a very nice affordable home weather station it's much more fun to watch these systems roll in when you've got a cool weather station and you can see all the stuff that it does it's totally wireless all solar powered no battery sonic wind sensor haptic rain gauge light sensor temperature and humidity is quite accurate as well and of course bar barometric pressure even a lightning detection system but anyway let's start to dive into things here we've got the european on the left versus the gfs on the right we've got alaska bc washington oregon here there's the pacific ocean you can see baja and the hurricane off to the south of baja as we speak so we've had this ridge in this atmospheric river uh, impacting british columbia and you can see the ridge weakening and we get the initial system kind of diving into the west coast here impacting mainly oregon down through california but then you can see the next lobe of colder air try to move down here and you've got the again the european on the left versus the gfs on the right and you can see the european brings this colder air out over the water a bit more here and it spins up over western british columbia here and this would not allow at least initially this cold air to get into the pacific northwest but look at the gfs with this trough carving out over washington state here so big model disagreement this would have huge impacts on the sensible weather that we get here across places like vancouver seattle and portland spokane i mean you can imagine you can see the cold air just fully getting over the area here on the gfs but not so much on the european then we scrolled a little bit more here and you can see the europeans start to bring some more systems in here while the gfs carving a trough all the way down across california and nevada here both models have the ridge but big disagreement on how this trough is going to carve out over the pacific northwest now looking at what those impacts would have here we go the european on the left versus the gfs on the right this is total snow in inches we're going to scroll through here and watch the, the, the difference here you can see the gfs bringing a pretty impressive snowfall all the way down through the Cascades of Oregon and Washington, British Columbia, the Rocky Mountains. But the European keeps that all bottled up across British Columbia and some of the Rocky Mountains off into Alberta, maybe impacting a bit more here across Montana. But the GFS clearly showing that colder air making its way down the West Coast quite a bit more. 
Now we take a look at the European versus the GFS again. This is ensemble mean though. This is an average of all 50 European ensemble members and all 30 GFS ensemble members here. So we're trying to get more agreement. You see the initial system moving to the West Coast. Pretty good agreement on that one. Trough setting up over California. But then the European versus the GFS. And again, you can kind of see the difference in the trajectory here. The European initially a bit more out over the water here, which would lead to more cyclogenesis here, which would keep that colder air bottled up across more of Canada versus the GFS allowing that trough to move down across from the Pacific Northwest. And uh, but both models also have the, the ridging, as I mentioned before here. So you can see the problems we're dealing with right now. So we look at the Canadian ensemble run. This is from yesterday afternoon. Put it into motion here. You see the initial system move into Oregon and California here. And then we start to bring this trough down. And you can see it's not, it leans a little bit more towards the European. It's not bringing that cold air too much out over places west of the Cascades here. And then you can see, of course, it has the ridge of high pressure here. So we're still trying to work out these details. It's going to be really interesting today to see what the European, the 12Z run brings, as well as the GFS and the other models also. So now we can look at other things too, like the North American model. This is a higher resolution one versus the, the North American model that I usually show, which is three kilometer. And you can see it only covers up through, uh, you know, it covers most of British Columbia here and some of Southeast Alaska. But you see the European I've got on the right. So let's put this into motion. And if I play this out, you can kind of see the trough's development here. So again, it doesn't show it coming out over water as much, at least initially. And of course the NAM ends at 48 hours. We don't know what happens after that, but you can see there's still pretty good model disagreement just between the North American model and the G and the European. And we're getting, this is kind of short term here. So uh, we're a little confused right now. We're, we're not sure how much this is gonna open up over the Pacific Northwest. So today is gonna be a big teller, I think, in what exactly is to come. And now we've got the GFS on the right versus the North American model on the left. So put that into motion. And you saw the huge differences between the GFS and the European. And you can kind of see the difference between the NAM, which is quicker with the colder air moving down through British Columbia versus the GFS here. And the GFS, of course, carved this trough out over the Pacific Northwest. So yeah, we've got some things we need to work out here, folks, before we really start to sound the alarm bells for some snowfall across the Cascades, because that trough is gonna make all the difference in the world. And now here we go for today. You can see, you know, not bad again, maybe some 60s for Seattle, mid 60s, and some 70s for Eastern uh, Washington, Oregon, maybe even up towards 80 and uh, some 70s for Western Oregon as well. Going through tomorrow, a little bit of cool down. System starts to move in here a bit and we cool down a bit further. And then as we go into Monday, Tuesday, you can kind of still see things in the National Blend of Models, things cool off pretty well here. But again, uh, the snowfall potential here is going to uh, it's going to hang largely on the trajectory of that trough here. So uh, we have low confidence in what's coming with that trough, basically, to put it simply. And this is looking at the European as of last night's run here. So the European was not letting that cold air come down. But let me show you something else here as well. So there goes the initial shot. You can see how it kind of bottles it up across British Columbia and east of the Rockies here, maybe portions of northern Montana but it does bring the colder air down. It's just delayed it at this point. So here we go on into later next week, into next weekend, and you can see some of that colder air make its way down to Washington and Northern Oregon here as well. But if it switched its mind so much here on that earlier trough, we're not gonna get too caught up in this one just yet because we're looking out pretty far, but the European is still showing this cold air trying to make it down into the Pacific Northwest. So um, yeah, basically we have low confidence. So look at the risk of hazardous temperatures here. You can kind of see the experimental product calling attention to that for some portions of Idaho and Montana as we go through the end of the month here. And this is at risk of heavy precipitation, you know, these systems. It does look like we'll remain active on both what the GFS and the European have been saying. So we do have that slight risk for some heavy precipitation as we go through the end of October into the early portion of November. And they're calling that risk of heavy snow here across some of the Rocky Mountains out there and some of the plains as well. Just kind of an experimental product there. This is the six to 10 day temperature outlook here this goes the 25th to the 29th and you can still see below average for now but we're trying to work out the details as i mentioned about 20 times already in this video and here we go another hazardous outlook here for much below average temperatures mainly east of the rockies some of the uh, dakotas out there as well so anyway i may do another video here tonight i haven't decided what i was going to do i was going to go out and maybe look at some of the lenticular clouds out here across mount rain here and hope to catch some activity as we go through the day today but i, I may or may not do that but if um the 12z models start to show things um 
start to clear things up a little bit, I'll probably do another video today and share that data and we'll talk through it and everything and kind of see where the models are trending and kind of exciting this time of year. It's kind of a typical thing here with these troughs. They have to take the perfect trajectory to really introduce cold air across the Pacific Northwest. And we're not talking lowland snow right now. It's still too early in the year. We're just talking about snowfall for mainly the Cascades, of course, maybe down towards the pass level and whatnot in a perfect scenario. But for, you know, we're not talking about lowland snow into any of the metropolitan areas or anything like that at this time of year. But anyway, um, yeah, we'll continue to break this down. I'll probably look at this again and maybe do another video today. And if not, then you'll talk to me by tomorrow morning at the latest. So again, leave your comments below. If you're a member of the page, you are automatically entered in the drawing to get that coffee mug here. And I will ship it out as, uh, you know, as soon as uh, today goes on and I get that you know, I'll, I'll go ahead and just do a kind of a random draw in there with people that do leave comments below. So anyway, um, hope you guys are liking these videos. Um, get out there and enjoy that weather. And I will talk to you guys either tonight or tomorrow.